What's up, you guys? I am Carly. And I'm Marie. And this is The Relationship Show, where we are using our expertise to answer your real questions. Today we're talking about heartbreak. Your first heartbreak, AKA, <laughs> why? AKA, okay. the thing that ruins every relationship literally for the rest of your life. Okay, I got my heart broken the, for the first time when I was in seventh grade. By a, a boyfriend. By a boyfriend. Thought I was gonna marry him. Okay, and sometimes things don't work out the way that you plan them when you're in seventh grade. Believe it or not. It's crazy. He broke my heart and I cried for days and days and days and I listened to Daniel Bedingsfield's If You're Not The One. Oh, I love that song. On repeat for weeks. My mom will always be like, whenever I hear that song, I think about you crying. <laughs> Let's jump into first question. My best friend dated a guy for about half a year, and during that time, Six me months. and him became very close friends. We both flirted with each other, but when they broke up, we remained good friends. I know that dating him would make her mad, but I really like him, and I truly believe he could be the one. <laughs> what should I do? Camille, 26. First of all, if you and him got super close when he was with your friend, he's a piece of Hot garbage. Definitely don't date that guy. And also go meditate. You're trying to steal your ex's, your friend's ex? There's plenty of penises in the sea. Plenty like, of, you don't need to, plenty of penises that one. in the sea. You can sea. find somebody else's ex-boyfriend. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, I am beyond confused. My boyfriend and I have been dating for four months. We are both starting college in the fall at different schools. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden he stopped talking to me. We haven't spoke in five days. My boyfriend is ghosting me. Is this even a thing? What am I supposed to do? Maeve, 18. Well. <laughs> Maeve. Maeve. Maeve, Maeve, Maeve. He. He cheated on you, okay, first and foremost. He's mm. definitely already with someone else. Mm. There is no way that he's not. I think go to college and have your college years free. Free as a bird, he's doing you a favor. Don't call him. You guys have been together for four months, you're going to college soon, you're not going to the same school. College is, that's your whole year. Yeah. Get your hocentennial bachelor. Why are you worried about this, this high school kid? Right, yeah, he, don't worry about him. He's nothing. He's nothing. You guys were gonna break up at probably two months into you guys going away to college anyway. Oh, before the freshman yeah. week, that first welcome week, yeah. you guys were gonna break up. Yeah. Because you're so, gonna hook up with somebody from another, it's like a lacrosse player or something. Of course you're gonna hook up with a lacrosse player. Mm. There's so many guys that you're gonna see your first day of school, your first week of school, you're gonna be like, who's, I didn't even, I forgot you're I had a boyfriend. Like, boyfriend? No, I didn't. Yeah. My name's Maeve. <laughs> right. I mean, it is whack of him to not uh, message He's you a, or call you. He's a he's days. a piece of doo doo. Piece of hot doo doo. Yep, fuego doo doo. Warm poop. Here's a question. My girlfriend and I broke up last week. Oh, sorry. She was my first relationship ever. Okay. We talked about everything, our future, all of it. Cute. I was pretty sure she was the one. She ended things last week because her feelings changed. I keep running different thoughts through my mind trying to figure out where things went south, what I did wrong. Everything reminds me of her. How am I supposed to get over this with no real closure? Tommy 22. Listen, Tommy 22. her feelings never changed. She was never that into you in the first place. Right. And that is 100% factual. Yeah. Because I've been that person. That's like I've been that person. In a relationship with somebody who likes you more and you're like, well, this is fun and I'm having a good time. Right. And it starts to feel like work. Yeah. And you're, and like, you're like, oh, he adores me. And then you're like, oh, that was just like the honeymoon phase. Yeah. And now it's over. How do I get over this with no real closure? We're helping you close this. Yeah. You don't get closure sometimes, Tommy. And sometimes, that's the way it works. Sometimes that's the closure. Yeah, that's the closure. It's just openness. Yeah. I hate that when you stop talking to a guy and he's like, I want to meet up and you're going to tell me why you don't like me. I'm like, you think I'm going to meet up with you? I'm like, he wants to murder me. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it sounds like the beginning of a Forensics Files episode. Or like snapped. Yeah. When it's done, it's done. Just walk away and be 22. <laughs> You guys have been so brave and sent us your questions, mm -hmm. and now this is the part of the show where it's our turn to spin the wheel of truth. It's very scary. Is it my turn? Yes, to it go is. First, That's a good hearing spin. it is satisfying, but I hate what's on it. Um, oh, <laughs> good, because I didn't want to answer that one. What's the worst reason you've dumped someone? Okay. This might make me sound 
terrible. I feel like nothing that I said has made me sound good, so. It's just something that happened that really freaked me out. Okay, what was um, it? This guy was at my house and I asked him if he wanted anything to drink and he said, yeah, do you have milk? Ooh, what time of the day was it? It was like at night. And I'm like, milk? Did he ask for warm milk? No, he just asked for a glass of milk. <laughs> First of all, you know someone only has like one gallon in their house of milk. Like there's not, I don't have extra milk like downstairs or like I have one thing of it. What did you say? <laughs> I said, milk? And he said, yeah, and I said, just a glass of milk? He said, yeah. And I said, sure. And then I watched him drink it as I planned how to break up with him. <laughs> it's so obnoxious to drink one full glass of milk. If you're not, are you five? I mean, he could ask you for something else. He could ask you for something else. Also, get milk on your way home, because you're not sleeping over. Conduct a flavored condom taste test. Is that is that what? I don't know. Right now? Okay. Okay, cool, great. Bring me my condoms! These can't be good for your vagina. They can't be good for your heart yeah. or your lungs. None of your intestines. Or your tongue. So I'm supposed to put this in my mouth? Why am I here? I'm just to lick condoms? Yes, that is why you're here. That's why I have a batch of, oop, oop. Okay. Uh, oh, it oh, smells- Oh, this one's definitely great. This smells like- um, Are you gonna taste Twizzlers. it? Twizzlers. This one kind of smells like is that the back? Oh, it's bubble gum. No, I don't taste that. I, I'm not getting that note. On the nose, I'm getting um, no. cher cherries. On the tongue, I'm getting just <laughs> plastic. <laughs> Same. And this is, it smells like grape gum, but it's bubble gum. This is a chocolate strawberry. Girl, Can bye. Can I smell it? It's important to do this after your first heartbreak because it's time to go home and you're gonna need a lot of flavored condoms. This does not taste like chocolate or strawberries. No. Okay, next one. Okay, next. This one's blue. Yeah, mine is blue too. Greenish. Is this mint? Ew! <laughs> it smells like a minty like pool float. Yeah, this is giving, um, uh, on the nose? Mine's mint. Mine's I'm mint. I'm getting junior mint realness yeah, from this. Mine's, mine's mint and it's blue. Yours is green. So yours might be spearmint. Mint chocolate. Why did, I, why the did chocolate. I get the two chocolate ones? That is so racist, guys. <laughs> why, get, why did I get all the chocolate ones? None of them smell like chocolate. Carly, it's your turn to spin the wheel. Okay. I'd rather just regular condom. Share your ugly crying face. <laughs> no, 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 I'm fine, no, I'm fine, I'm, I'm fine. Mine's just, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like mine's like, it's also windy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was everything that we could tell you about your first heartbreak. Here are some lessons learned. Number one, there are plenty of penises in the sea. Oh my God, so many dicks. Mm -hmm. so and they just pop out of the water. Oh, like sometimes you just they can grab them. Sometimes, sometimes they you just hit you to... on the forehead. It's yeah. crazy how it just hits you from <laughs> anyway. So many dicks in the sea. Lesson number two: 18 to 30 are prime hoeing years. Right. You're oh, gonna just hoe it up, hoe it up. And number three, you don't need closure. Just move on. It's gonna be okay. You'll get closure when you bump into him on the train one day. Right, and you're looking all cute coming from yoga. You have your yoga mat. And his beard is patchy and his stomach is hanging over his pants. Right, and he stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Am I projecting? That's closure. Thank you guys so much. We really hope you liked this episode. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and just go out and be the biggest hoe that you could be, sis. Yeah. And, and serves. Right, and Always too. use condoms. Flavored, flavored condoms. So that your cervix just falls right out. <laughs> but it'll be a big, <laughs> it'll be a big stinky grape strawberry. <laughs> big grape cervix. <laughs> and